Hi everyone, this is David Clark, owner of adultcollector.org, and today I want to talk a bit about the new Masters of the Universe Origins Castle Grayskull playset that was recently announced on Friday, October 9th from Mattel. Here's the announcement made uh, by the official Masters of the Universe Facebook page. The castle was offered on Walmart.com for $75. It's sold out. And the announcement offers uh, several a look at several different versions of the castle. We'll have a look at that. Here's the box art for the castle, and it looks gorgeous. This is one of the most beautiful Masters of the Universe uh, art pieces I've ever seen. Uh, this was made by Nate Barch and Axel Gimenez, two huge uh, Masters of the Universe fans. Uh, and I really appreciate that Mattel included them in this project. They did an amazing job. You can see the artworks full of surprises. In the upper right corner, you see uh, Sky High featured in the Classics toy line, along with a couple of uh, Royal Guards piloting the Sky Sled. In the lower left corner, you see Evil Inn summoning some very evil looking uh, skeleton warriors. I hope we get a two pack of those. That would be amazing. I love the battle between uh, Merman and uh, Man at Arms. Stratos is holding his staff, which I hope that comes with uh, packaged with this figure. I'm not holding my breath on that. Uh, Alex uh, Axel's uh, page here has. Uh, look at the sides of the box. You can see on one side you've got Fisto fighting some evil monster here. Above this battle is, uh, yeah, you can see a couple of evil warriors piloting or riding some pterodactyls. That is very cool. And this, I love this. This is Battle Cat fighting, of course, Panthor. You can see uh, Manny Faces there on the left side. And yeah, that is some amazing looking box art. Certainly worthy uh, a worthy homage to uh, Rudy Obrero. Here's another image from the announcement. There isn't much paint here. This is clearly a, an earlier prototype of the castle. This image is full of wonderful Origins figures. A lot of people were uh, excited to see uh, Landshark and Panthor. Those were figures announced during the Power PowerCon event. And you can see uh, She-Ra here in the lower left corner. Now, this is the regular retail She-Ra, not the exclusive PowerCon She-Ra figure. Here's another look at the castle. Uh, I love what they're doing with the filters on this one. I believe this possibly could be the uh, the back of the box, uh, I'm not exactly sure. I'm surprised there's no uh, Prince Adam or Sky Sled in the image. Uh, not that there's room for it. You can see in the upper right corner, there's a peek at what's on the inside of the box. You'll notice in this image, the, the throne is missing the sticker. I think that's interesting. And I think the sticker's missing from the dungeon as well. So. This again is not what you're going to be getting in the box. You know, the colors on all these toys look very nice here. Man at Arms uh, has some darker armor. The, the translucent uh, stand for Orco doesn't look quite as translucent as it should. But yeah, some very nice qualities here. Here's another image of the castle that was included in the announcement. And you can see this has a lot more paint on it. I'm pretty sure this is what we're going to be getting in the the box. Uh, that's This is the Temple of Darkness uh, version of the Sorceress from the Vintage Mini Comics. And of course here are the accessories that come with the Origins Castle. Uh, let's have a look at this. So first I want to mention I'm, I'm personally not a fan of all of these white flecks of paint that are covering the outside of the castle. You'll see that they are all throughout the inside of the castle sh uh, shell as well. I really do like the new origins, uh, the parapets. That's what these are called uh, on top of the castle. They look much more castle-like than what we see in the vintage castle playset, which you can see here. Uh, they're pretty flat on the vintage one. The dome on the vintage castle, I really prefer this scale. Uh, the size is much more reasonable, I think, than this gigantic dome 
that we're presented with here. Same thing with the eyes. The eyes are just, in my opinion, just too big. Uh, you can see they look very nice on the, the vintage castle. Same with the nose. Uh, the teeth are very different than the vintage castle. They're very pointy. Um, it kind of makes this look like kind of an imp, some kind of, you know, impish demon skull. Whereas on the vintage castle, the teeth give it a more of a kind of a gorilla skull, kind of a giant, you know, monstrous, proper uh, looking skull. I think this is much better looking than what we're shown here on the Origins castle. And I'm kind of surprised that there's no wood texture here on these two slats under the windowsill. You know, they're just flat. You can see on the vintage castle, the, the molding includes some, you know, this is definitely intended to be wood here. And same here, this is supposed to be wood. And on the new version, it's, it's all flat, it's all uh, stone. Yeah, so I thought that was interesting. Uh, another comparison I want to make is with the door. I really feel that this door is very cartoony. It, it looks very much like it's a cartoon look. It looks like it's a, a small child's toy right here. Uh, and here I'll show you the door's sculpt. There you go for the vintage castle. Uh, I do appreciate that that the uh, the new castle has the same sword functionality. You can plug He-Man's sword into this uh, hole here on the new castle to open the the jaw bridge. You can see this is just a, a gorgeous sculpt. Plenty of detail on the and you can see it again here with some nice shadow. On the Origins Castle, again, very cartoony. Uh, I feel like this shape here with the uh, skull shield and the helmet with the swords, it looks almost like gummy, like almost like a like it like the door is made out of chocolate or something. It's a very the, the details are very soft, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, compared to and yeah, there you go. Compared to the Vintage Castle. I do very much like what they did with the uh, training weapon. Uh, you can see it's an actual round sculpted boar's head and the fist there is actually sculpted uh, compared to the training weapon, uh, the vintage training weapon. There you can see the vintage training weapon. It, the boar is and the this uh, fist is it's just all flat and so it's nice to see that they it's actually sculpted in the new version i do miss the texture on the vintage version you can see the new version yeah it's just uh i don't see that texture at least not in this photo so well you can see that, that this is a, a very light gray i kind of wish it had a bit of color or that it was maybe a darker gray. Yeah. So looking at the weapon rack, uh, I feel that the you can see the scale here with sorceress. I think that the new weapon rack is pretty small, it seems, and uh, it's almost kind of like a almost like a McDonald's toy version of the weapon rack since there are no pegs. These are just kind of bumps here. Uh, the pegs on this version were replaced by these pieces here to hold this, the weapons. Uh, it contains fewer weapons than the vintage version. You can see there's no battle axe, no shield, no pistol. It's missing one of its halberds. And uh, yeah, I do. It's nice that it's brown. Um, I'll show you. I do something about that yellow on the vintage castle uh, I just really enjoy but uh, yeah it's not bad looking uh, with the brown paint and you'll see that you know this I do prefer the the color of the weapons in the vintage version as well you can see this is again a, a very flat light gray the sculpts of the 
the weapons are somewhat uninspired, I would say. Uh, you can see, for example, the mace looks very squared here uh, versus the very nice proper uh, mace here. Moving on to the laser cannon. Uh, this, I really do like the new laser cannon. I like that the there are two feet on either side. I like the overall sculpt of the base and the colors, nice. Um, it's hard to make out here, but those uh, barrels are very close together. That really turns me off from this design uh, for the laser cannon. Also, the you can see it's missing the, the scope. And so let's look at the vintage ver version. Yep, here you can see the on the vintage one, the barrels are far apart. It's got the scope on there. Uh, two feet on the front, but only one in the back, and this helps uh, connect it to the, the castle on the vintage version. I imagine that with the Origins version uh, of the laser cannon that you don't have to actually plug it into the castle, that perhaps it'll just be, uh, you know, you could just sit it on top of the castle without having to plug it into a peg or anything. Next up is the the new Eagle uh, weapon rack accessory. Yes, it comes with two weapon racks. Uh, they left out the triangle weapon rack, which I want to show you right here. And this again, like like a lot of the pieces in the castle playset, it's just a cardboard cutout. A beautiful design. And so it's, I feel it's really unfortunate that they left that out. Uh, I, I can't imagine a, a good use for this new accessory. I mean, maybe it, it, it looks like it would be a good uh, spice rack uh, or a, uh, a book rack, a bookshelf. Um, but as a weapon rack, I'm just not honestly convinced. Uh, so I feel, I don't know, kind of like it's a wasted opportunity there. Uh, with a flag, uh, I really do enjoy that it has its own base, that you don't have to clip it onto something. Um, the flag itself, I think, is pretty small. Um, you can sh see the comparison with the vintage flag. You can see here that the flag, the vintage flag has to be clipped onto something, but the flag itself is nice and big, so I, I kind of want you know, the best of both worlds. I want to be able to, um, you know, stand the flag up by itself, but I want the flag to be nice and big like the vintage version. Here's the new ladder, and I want to show you the inside of the castle to give you, give you a better look at it. And yeah, it, it looks very nice. It's, you know, brown instead of the vintage, um, gray I'll show you with the vintage castle you know the ladder wasn't you couldn't really use it it was pretty flimsy and uh, you yeah you couldn't display figures climbing up it it, it didn't look very good uh, with the and it kind of looks pretty long I don't know I'd like to see it side by side but this one for some reason it kind of looks a little you know, it's kind of stumpy, stubby, um, which kind of, you know, with these proportions makes the castle look a bit smaller. Otherwise, it's very nice. You know, it, it, no doubt it's going to be uh, nice to display figures, you know, climbing up and down the ladder. And it's, of course, a proper brown. So, yeah, very nice. Here, by the way, here are all of those white flecks of paint, the speckled white paint all throughout the inside of the castle. I'm just really not a fan personally of them. And again, uh, you can see in the corner here with the laser cannon, uh, the barrels are very close together. Um, no reason why the barrels couldn't be separated out a bit more. I really do like that it comes with these two banners. And I wanna show you something because I, I'm, I think that the castle's designed so that you can move the banners around, but uh, I'm, I'm really not sure. Uh, you can see here in a video that was a really cool video that was made 
to show off the castle. This is a, a, a rendering of the castle. It's not the physical castle. Um, you can see these tabs. You can see right here. And you can see that in this video, this banner has been repositioned, it's been moved. So I'm not sure if those will actually show up in the final product that we get because I haven't seen those tabs in any of the other photos that have been released for this castle. You can see there are no tabs here in this photo. So yeah, we'll see, I'm not sure. I wanna talk about the dungeon sticker, by the way. Uh, you can see it hiding underneath the, the new Eagle weapon rack. Uh, let's get a closer look at that. So here, this is the biggest picture that, that's been released of the dungeon. Uh, stickers so far. This is from that video that I referenced. And here, let me zoom in. There we go. You can see, you know, it's very similar to the vintage sticker. Um, it is not, the sides aren't as flat as I thought they would be. They're nice, you know, cut. It's got a cut out look here. And the sticker is certainly smaller than the vintage one. And also, I'm, I, I think it's kind of unfortunate that there's this rectangular shape you'll see that's carved out of the mold so that it basically tells you uh, where to put the, the dungeon sticker. And uh, I was kind of hoping I could leave this sticker off or remove it and just put a vintage sticker here, but I think that's it wouldn't necessarily work with, with this shape cut out you know, or cut into the mold, you know, so that's unfortunate. Here is a look at the vintage sticker. You can see that it takes up quite a bit of real estate. It's really big uh, on the vintage castle, and you can see it encroaches on the entryway here. Um, this sticker was designed by Rebecca Taylor, wife of Mark Taylor. I had the honor of interviewing them both uh, somewhat recently on an episode of the Council of the First Ones podcast. I like this uh, so much better. I, I kind of wonder if there, you know, what's the difference in the, the depth of this castle versus the new one, because you can see there's there's enough real space on the vintage castle, but when you look at the new castle and how far in, you know, how little space there is between the opening here and the edge, uh, I don't think that that vintage sticker will fit. Looking at the throne, you know, the sticker looks very vintage, actually, um, and so does m the rest of the design. Uh, I do kind of like it better than the vintage uh, version, but, uh, you know, this, the top of it, it kind of reminds me of Transformers, actually. Uh, I, I kind of wish it looked more like the throne in the, the mini comics or in the classics castle playset, but it's not bad at all. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. I do like what they did with the computers, the very large one on the left and the smaller one on the right. Uh, very colorful. I hope that all of these colors are preserved in the final version that we receive. I really do miss that that uh, spacesuit. Another beautiful design. This, of course, is another cutout from the vintage castle. Uh, they left it out. Yeah, Mattel left it out in this uh, new version of the castle. Uh, I was really hoping, and I still do, I hope that somewhere in the Origins line we can receive uh, an, a fully articulated spacesuit figure. I think that would be pretty popular with uh, Motu fans. We never received one in the past. You know, the, the version in the castle uh, well, the vintage one, uh, like you saw, was a cutout in the classics version. Um, it was, you know, we did get the same accessory, but it was hollow. It wasn't articulated. It was just a hollow piece that you could sit up against the wall. Um, in the 2000X version, of course, uh, the, that castle didn't, didn't include a, a spacesuit. I, I honestly wouldn't have minded if they left the sorceress out you know, this new sorceress figure. And and again, honestly, I think that, you know, most people would recognize the, 
the filmation version of the sorceress uh, rather than this uh, this you know variant version. So uh, I get that you know probably from a strategic uh, point, uh, Mattel would want to have the source the filmation version of the sorceress as a single carded figure. But still, I, I kind of feel like maybe the, the sorceress wasn't uh, necessary to include in here. That's just me. Of course, it's easy to tell right away that the elevator in this new playset looks almost identical to the vintage uh, elevator. You can see that right here. Uh, with the vintage castle, the, the only difference I can see is that uh, the shaft in the you know behind the elevator is totally flat and uh, because of how it's designed the the rope uh, it would be damaged uh, when you used it too much uh, you can see on this version there's this nice detail here and i think that's that's uh, very functional i think it'll help prevent the uh, the rope from from tearing from wearing out uh, so yeah very very nice um, I'll note that the you know there's some nice texture here in the floors of this castle and that uh, there's an extra floor piece on this version right here that's very nice I'm kind of tempted to try to take these and uh, add them to the vintage castle which of course you know these are just flat pieces I'm very curious uh, how well that could be pulled off. Something else I wanted to point out was that the thatched roof seen here on the left is pretty large on this Origins playset. It's very round, and you can see the comparison with the Vintage Castle. It's uh, much more triangular. It's smaller on that Vintage Castle, uh, which I prefer. Also, I feel that this playset offering would benefit greatly from a mini-comic. For many of us, the vintage mini-comics were a big part of our early Masters of the Universe experience growing up. They helped us develop a sense of who the characters are, and they fueled our imaginations. Because of this, I really wish that this new castle would be packaged with a deluxe like, 22-page mini-comic with an exciting story for children of all ages to enjoy. The Wave 1 mini-comics have more pages in them than the the WWE figures, but it's still not enough space, I feel, for the kind of story we want to see in a Masters of the Universe book. And it still makes no sense to me why there is no text in the international versions of the comics. Overall, I think this was a decent attempt to try to update the Vintage Castle. I do think there is certainly room for improvement. Uh, it would have been great to see more fan involvement with this project. Uh, I would love to see Joe Amaro and the Four Horsemen uh, take a crack at this. Uh, certainly, they did an amazing job with the Classics Castle, uh, albeit it's a much more expensive project than this one. But uh, yeah, I think that there are some definitely some things that could have been done differently. I was really looking forward to trying to customize the Origins castle, but between the, the big eyes, the, the pointy teeth, the oversized dome, and a few other issues I have with this, instead I've decided to customize my vintage castle using a few parts from the Origins castle and seeing uh, where I can go with it. Yeah, it'll be a great challenge. Well, that's all I had for now. Thank you so much for listening in. This is David Clark, owner of adultcollector.org. Again, it's a network of pages and groups celebrating everything we love about He-Man and She-Ra. I encourage everybody to follow adultcollector.org for all of your He-Man news and discussion. And please check out the 15,000 member Origins Fans group on Facebook. Until next time, stay safe and good journey, everyone.